Porsche Carrera Cup France is back. And just like last year, the first event takes place at Le Mans as part of the GT Tour. The weather conditions were capricious and there were 26 drivers at the start line in the start. For a weekend that promised some great on-track battles, no matter the category, young talents or gentlemen drivers, the key words for the season are spectacular action and uncertainty because the level has probably never been as high as this season. This year we can really say that the French Cup has reached true maturity because we've got 26 cars, more than half of them are driven by drivers who have legitimate title dreams, they're very quick. There are so many top-level drivers that it's difficult to make a true prediction. We've seen that Maxime Jus was quick from the off last time and Kohn Ledegar too, and he's got experience now. And there are some youngsters who've come into the championship like Tom Dillman or Denada. It will be a great championship with lots of twists and turns and lots of possible winners in my opinion. A higher level indeed because new teams have joined, that's the case for Ivan Muller Racing. And the four-time world champion in the WTCCs sees coming to the Porsche Carrera Cup as a logical step for his team. Entering the Carrera Cup was just an extension of what I'd done with the mid-jet two-liters for gentlemen drivers or for novices who wanted to start out. After that, I had the mid-jet turbos for the next step above, and the Porsche seemed to be the next step up. The three disciplines follow each other up, so it's logical. Others have returned to the Carrera Cup, like the IMSA Performance Matmut team that have a high-level trio. Nicola Armindo, winner of the German Cup in 2010, Jimmy Ontunes, the young Swiss driver who's well up for it, and Laurent Pasquale here to spice up the B category. Well, why are we back in the Carrera Cup? Everyone has a new car, so everyone's in the same boat, everyone needs to work. We're here to compete for the title in all categories and in the team category too. And then there's Labra Competition, who, like IMSA Performance, have won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in the GTE AM category. For a return to the Carrera Cup, the team has gone for two drivers diametrically opposed in terms of experience. Antoine Lepesque, who's making the big jump from karting, and above all, Gail Castelli. You might remember that last year Castelli drove in his own structure with his father, acting as team manager and engineer, and his entire family helping out with the logistics. Despite the extremely limited means, Castelli became Carrera Cup champion because he was the most consistent. Now he's cut loose from the family, a necessary move in order to make the next step. To progress in motorsport, you need to go through the right teams, he says. For me, it was primordial to go to a team like Labra Competition. They've had a lot of good results in the past in the Porsche Carrera Cup. They know how to do it, and that's all good for me. With the Labra team, Castelli benefits from the experience of Jack Leconte, his new team manager. But his father remains alongside his son for the races, though of course with a different role now. My role is to coach Gael and support him and to give him some information. His role is to listen to his engineer. The fact he's with an engineer will help him mature and means he'll be better trained. Gael Castelli undoubtedly will require time to adapt, but he won't get all that much because the competition's so fierce. Starting with Lonnie Martins, championship runner-up last season, he pushed Castelli all the way to the final race of 2013. It's true that finishing second was frustrating, but all in all it was a very good year for Racing Technology. Finishing runners-up is an achievement in the Porsche Cup. This year we'll try to do just as well and without being pretentious, why not compete for the title? Beyond those two, there are several outsiders who feel they stand a real chance. The likes of Vincent Beltoise, Combe Ledegar, or the four Sebastian Loeb Racing drivers. In all, there are about 10 championship contenders. In the gentleman drivers, Christophe Lapierre is still there and seems to be a step clear of the others. But with the Norwegian Raw Lindland, Alexander Gaide, or Christophe Amon as rivals, he can't afford to relax. The presentations are done now down to the starting grid for the start of the first race. In pole position is Maxime Juice, one of the Sebastian Loeb Racing hopes. Johnny Maltans is alongside him in the front row with Combe Ledegar just behind. Gael Castelli starts down in eighth. But just as the warm-up lap starts, the weather intervenes, a rainstorm all over the circuit. That means it's combat stations in the teams as the mechanics get the wet weather tyres ready. All the drivers come into the pits, a new starting procedure is put into place.
Tom Dillman, who was fourth on the starting grid, unable to take the start line because of a mechanical problem. Juice on pole. We'll see what the soaked first corner ends up with, and it's uh, Beltoise we're on board with now. Martins cutting the chicane, Juice making a little error too. Oh, Juice going straight on into the gravel trap. The pole sitter losing a number of spots right there. So it's Combe Ledegar leading in front of Martens. Oh, that's Castelli going into Beltoise. Let's go on board with Beltoise to see how this happened. Beltoise coming back into it in midfield then. Oh, and it's the abandonment for Armindo. A leading trio pulling away from the rest. The Lidigar leading, Martin second. Then we've got Denardi. Castelli fourth, and Tunes is in fifth at the minute. Martins putting the pressure now on Ledugar. Martins the championship runner-up in 2013, of course. And here he goes. Trying on the straight. Went to the outside, couldn't get through there. And Ledugar shutting the door. Joffrey Denada having a look there it's a three-way battle these three well clear of the rest now and Martins back up over the rear bumper and Martins through on the outside Martins into the lead and Denada threw into second in front of Ledugar. Well, Ledugar down from first to third. Further back, a spin for Christoph Emmel. Christoph Lapierre running away with the gentleman drivers category. He's fifth overall in this race. Lapierre aiming for a hat-trick of gentlemen drivers' titles this year as it's Castelli having a good fight with Maroc and Beltoise. We're down in seventh and eighth position here. Two places lost for Nicola Maroc there. Oh, drive-through penalties and affecting a lot of drivers, including Lonnie Martins. Nicolas Maroc, Jimmy Antunes, Alexandre Cugno, Geoffrey Denada and Sasha Botman also caught out with the drive-through penalties. Geoffrey Denada coming in for his drive-through now. Lonnie Martins cut the chicane as we saw earlier and there were numerous infringements out on the track not helped by the difficult conditions of course the spray reducing as we head towards the finish line John Ledegar running away with it now Martins trying to make up ground now. The same for Denada and Martins pass Roman Monti. Maxim Juice is in this four way fight too. Well, this is the uh, battle for third place now. 
And it's uh, Beltoise and Castelli. Castelli in the one, as befits the reigning champion. And Castelli through. Castelli overtaking Beltoise and into third place in the first race of the year. Castelli going for a podium position then. But it's also easy for Comle Dugar. And he's going to take the chequered flag and take the first win. Stephen Palette in second, Gael Castelli third. Come Ledegar, the winner of the first race, congratulated by his father and by his team that's run by Philippe Almeras. A winning return for him to the team with which he finished championship runner-up two seasons ago. Confirmation of the results. Paulette second, Castelli third, Beltoise fourth and Lapierre winning the gentleman drivers in fifth. I try to be patient and not force things. It worked really well for me and we've done a great job since the start of the weekend. During the testing at the start of the year with the team, we worked a huge amount and I'm really pleased to win this for them as they've been directly involved. I love this family style atmosphere. Everyone gets on with everyone else. Everyone's there for me and behind me and that's why I'm delighted to share this win with them. Christophe Lapierre then winning the Gentleman Drivers category, finishing fifth in the overall standings in race one. His teammate Raw Lindland and Eric Trier complete the podium. Because not everybody can drive in the Carrera Cup, Porsche has put in place a driving school on the Maison Blanche test track. More than 300 had a lap at the wheel of a Carrera, a Panamera or a 911 Turbo. The objective is to put in place a testing centre and to create the link between our competition cars and our road cars. It's obvious that to attract clients and to show them Porsche's DNA, that is to say motorsport, the best way is to show them that you can use your road car on the track, go quickly and safely and enjoy yourself. The discovery takes place in two stages, first at the wheel and by driving slowly, and then as a passenger alongside one of the instructors. Of course, it's quicker then and much more impressive. The sensations are really agreeable because these cars are very sporty, very quick and have great control. It's so much fun. And even then, they don't have quite the same sensations as the drivers in the Carrera Cup with their new car, the Porsche 991 GT3 Cup. Let's go on board with Vincent Beltoise. How can you be at Le Mans without talking about the return of Porsche to the 24 hours in LMP1, a category they've won 16 times? This comeback 16 years on is huge for the drivers. Porsche at Le Mans for me, like for all those who are passionate about motorsport, is quite something. They should be there. 
And it's exciting they're coming back in 2014 because they're the manufacturers with the record number of victories. Porsche has created Le Mans history and Le Mans has impacted on Porsche's history, so it's huge. For now, everything's going well and we're where we want to be. We want to see how it will go here at Le Mans. We've got the World Endurance Championship, the six hours of Spa coming up. And that's the last preparatory event before the 24 hours. And Porsche pulling out all the stops in order to be ready for June the 14th and 15th. And that goes for the Carrera Cup drivers too. Because as a curtain raiser, a massive race will be held, mixing together drivers from the French Cup and the British version. Among the 60 drivers who will take the start that day, Stephen Paulette will undoubtedly be well placed. The winner of the Porsche Scholarship Programme arrives in the Carrera Cup with a flattering reputation. Of course we're counting on him as a driver and he's used to winning championships and that's a great quality. Even if he has no Carrera Cup experience, I'm convinced he's a methodical lad and he'll progress little by little to find his feet. And it worked pretty well for him in the opening race of the weekend as he finished second. Palette is ambitious, but he knows he needs to improve in order to target the title as early as this year. I'm a traction specialist, he says, always quick with attraction. traction. The function mode is different and I need to take it on board, but it's been coming since the middle of the winter testing period. I think I've got the feeling, but I'm still looking for that attacking point that will make the difference. But we started well anyway. The rookie's starting off in a newcomer, but not just any newcomer, it's Yvonne Mullers, and he's a deluxe teacher for Stephen Paulette. Stephen Paulette est un, un débutant Stephen qui is a newcomer to the Porsche, Porsche Cup and an emerging pilot, talent, so I was interested in coaching him. Dire, he works hard and he's determined. He has only that in mind. For now, the student looks like he's learning fast, as in the rain he sets the sixth fastest time in second qualifying. In front of him and posting the quickest time is Maxime Juice on pole, just like for race one. Sasha Botman had originally been penalised but ends up starting second in front of Lonnie Martins and the previous day's winner, Kohn Ledogar. The sun is back, that's a problem for all the teams. Some are starting out with wet tyres, others with slicks. But on the warm-up lap, those with wet tyres realise their mistake. The track's almost dry. The mechanics click into gear again as about 10 men come in to change tyres. Among them leading contenders such as Jus, Martens and Lidegar. They'll all have to start from pit lane. And so it's Sasha Botman who's the first on-track car. And the starting grid's been decimated. Jimmy Antunes making a poor start. Botman even worse, and it's Beltoise leading. Armindo made a very good start by way of contrast to Botman. So Beltoise leading, flying past Botman. We can see that on board with him. Beltraz putting on the slick tyres from the off. That was the right choice. So many of them got it wrong. That's Maroc into the spin, the 85. And now Palette spinning. A real pity for the man who finished second the previous day. Here we go, that's Palette again. Maybe a little wet patch on the track. Pesco coming in to get the slick tyres on. This is the fight for third place. Castelli getting overtaken by Antunes. And they love that in the IMSA performance team. Armindo now with Beltoise battling for the race lead. It's very tense in the IMSA performance ranks. On board with Beltraz and we can see Armindo. Armindo going through for first. Can he make it stick? Not yet.
Our Beltois is not getting the right angle into the corner and overtaken by Armindo. And they love that. Down with Imsa. An incredible finish and Armindo pipping Beltois at the death. On the very last corner and taking the checkered flag. Jimmy Antunes taking third place. So Armindo, unlucky the previous day, taking his revenge with that victory pin from Beltoise. Antunes finishing third. Laurent Pasquale wins the gentleman drivers. It's great for him, sir. We had a perfect race and we put in place a good strategy and it paid off for us. We took a lot of risks because yesterday we weren't very good. It was a difficult day for us. There's a lot of competition for the victories. When you get the opportunity, you have to seize it. Yesterday we were unlucky. Today we made up for that bad luck. Et aujourd'hui, on a rattrapé la malchance. Armindo and Bill Toise, one and two, and Tunez and Castelli, very close together for third and fourth. Dillman fifth. But it's Vincent Beltoise who leaves here as championship leader with a second and a fourth. He's ahead of the reigning champion, Gail Castelli, by two points. Come Ledegar, only ninth in the second race, is third in the standings. The weekend's over and I can say I scored the necessary points. It wasn't easy and a lot happened in the races. It was very high level racing with six different drivers on the two podiums. I'm happy to have scored a lot of points and they'll be important to what happens next, but nothing has been decided just yet. In the gentleman category, it's even closer with three drivers joint top of the standings. Laurent Pasquale, Eric Trouillet and Jean Glorieux. Christophe Lapierre is only a point behind. It will be close all season. The next round at Imola in Italy on May the 17th and 18th promises a huge amount.